a great grandmother and four children swept away. Landslides, crumpled roads, and Jazz Fest with Stevie Wonder, a flooded mess. When will this dangerous weather end? Make or break the Indiana primary, the crucial test. Will Donald Trump seal the deal, or can Ted Cruz keep his campaign alive? His latest strategy, what's at stake in Tuesday's pivotal contest? Amazing survival story. An American mother and daughter lost in the wilderness down under. I, I, you know, was scared to death. No food, temperatures dropping, using all their energy in a desperate call for help. Speaking from their hospital bed this morning, how they made it out alive. And comedian in chief. Hollywood heavyweights mingle with Washington power players for the star-studded White House Correspondents' Dinner. President Obama taking aim at Donald Trump's foreign policy experience. Miss Sweden, Miss Argentina, Miss Azerbaijan. We're inside and on the red carpet with all the hysterical all right. highlights. Next. Next. Live from ABC News in New York, this is Good Morning America. Hey, good morning. It was President Obama's final turn as comedian-in-chief at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And Paula, you were right there. I got to say, it was so impressive. What he did playing comic-in-chief, it is not easy. He hit it out of the park, and he had an epic moment at the end, his final White House Correspondents' Dinner. He literally Obama. dropped the mic and said, Obama out. We'll have all of the highlights coming up. It and, was epic. And you said it's, a, it's actually a tough room, and he got a standing ovation. Yeah, actually, he got a bigger ovation than the actual comedian who followed him. So yeah. All the highlights coming yeah. up, as you said. But we're going to start here with a parallel situation in parts of the Gulf Coast. After a week of heavy rains, we saw dangerous and deadly flash flooding overnight. A great grandmother, four children washed away. That threat is not over. We want you to look at the map this morning. Watches and warnings are up throughout the area and ABC's Lauren Lister is in Lindale, Texas for us this morning. Hi, Lauren. Good morning, Paula. Here in eastern Texas, outside of Dallas, people in these communities recovering from a tornado that ripped through here, gutting what used to be a store where I'm standing, and more tragic, deadly floods, killing a half dozen people just miles from here. Overnight, torrential downpours and flash flooding pounding the Gulf Coast. Streets becoming rivers in New Orleans. In the storm's wake... Oh, my God! This road in Texas literally getting swept away. A nearby tragedy striking this community. Every possible missing family. We found two so far. Linda Asbury and her four great grandchildren, all under the age of 10, unable to escape the fast moving floodwaters. She was trying to get out and trying to help them. She was trying to swim, but she had four kids, and you know, it's kind of hard to do it by herself. Inside the Asbury's devastated home, debris showing just how high the water reached. The severe weather has done at least eight inches of rain in parts of Texas, not sparing this bar in Palestine. Customers wading through knee-deep water. And ferocious winds have worked their way into Georgia, sending this tree through a house, splitting it nearly in half. In western Arkansas, this mountain finally giving way. As this entire lane blocked. Causing a landslide. Back in the Big Easy, heavy rains made for a muddy and dirty combination at New Orleans Jazz Fest. Not dampening some spirits, but enough to cancel a much anticipated performance by Stevie Wonder. Wonder took the stage, apologizing to his waterlogged fans. Back here in Texas, I'm in what remains of a sporting goods store. The wall just blown off by that tornado. Brand new shoes scattered everywhere among the rubble. And Dan, a community now having to rebuild. It's a mess, and as we said, it's not over. Lauren, thank you. We're going to move now to politics and two days until a pivotal primary in Indiana. Donald Trump is hoping to effectively wrap up the nomination with a win there, but Ted Cruz is making a big push, hoping to play spoiler. ABC's Devin Dwyer is right there on the ground. Devin, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Dan. Indiana hasn't been this politically important in decades, and for the underdogs on both sides, Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders, Tuesday's primary is make or break. It's the final sprint in Indiana in a last-ditch attempt to slow down Donald Trump. Clear and simple contrast. That's what this election is about.
This morning, Ted Cruz's campaign here tying Trump to Clinton in two new campaign ads. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are two sides of the same coin. As super PACs backing Cruz unleashed more than $2 million in anti-Trump attacks. Nice to meet you, ma'am. Barnstorming Indiana, Cruz's wife Heidi and new running mate Carly Fiorina. The only way to get to the nomination is 1,237 delegates and close isn't a touchdown. Trump's won nearly a thousand delegates in the GOP primary so far, less than 250 away from clinching the nomination. And Tuesday's race is key with 57 delegates up for grabs in the Hoosier state in a winner take most contest. This next Tuesday in Indiana, where I'm going now, is gonna be a biggie. They wanna see something that's going to be, they wanna see victory. And after those Stop Trump activists blocked his path in California, Trump is striking back on Twitter, calling them thugs and criminals and saying they should be dealt with strongly by police. And Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders face off here in Indiana today as well. Mrs. Clinton's ahead in the polls here. She holds a huge lead in the delegate race. And after Tuesday's primary, guys, it will be mathematically impossible for Sanders to win the nomination with pledged delegates. Paula? And that's why Indiana, the Hoosier state, is so pivotal right now. Devin, thank you. Well, Hollywood stars and political wonks collided at the annual White House Correspondents' Dinner, lovingly referred to as the Nerd Prom. But this year's event had a special tone. It marked President Obama's final chance to play stand-up comic-in-chief. And ABC's Nick Watt has the very best of the night. Nick, and there was a whole lot of material for you to work with. It was a wonderful evening. It was, Paula. You were here last night rubbing shoulders with the movie stars, the media, and the leaders of the free world. It was a bizarre and brilliant night of roasting and remembrance. President Obama's final turn at the Correspondents' Dinner. From Will and Jada to Carrie Fisher and Gary the Dog. A little bit of Hollywood meets D.C., and there's going to be jokes flying. If you didn't have the accent, I wouldn't let you do it. It's a bit crazy, you know? It is a bit crazy. <laughs> the butt of many jokes, Donald Trump not here, but... Two of his boys show. You're putting your head into the lion's mouth. You know what? I don't know that we've ever shied away from a challenge. I'm sure we're going to be made fun of tonight. Uh, yep. Is this dinner too tacky for the Donald? <laughs> what could he possibly be doing instead? Is he at home eating a Trump steak? <laughs> Tweeting out insults to Angela Merkel? Your hair is so white, it tried to punch me at a Trump rally. He has spent years meeting with leaders from around the world. Miss Sweden, <laughs> Miss Argentina, <laughs> Miss Azerbaijan. Hillary was not spared. Hillary trying to appeal to young voters is a little bit like your relative who just signed up for Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Dear America, did you get my poke? I'm not sure I'm using this right. Love, Aunt Hillary. Only one candidate showed. He usually goes to the White House Correspondents' early bird dinner. You look like a million bucks. Or to put it in terms you'll understand, you look like 37,000 donations of $27 each. This President Obama's eighth and final Correspondents' dinner. Eight years ago, I said it was time to change the tone of our politics. In hindsight, I clearly should have been more specific. <laughs> And some traditional self-deprecation. Prince George showed up to our meeting in his bathrobe. <laughs> that was a slap in the face. So <laughs> that, I just have two more words to say. Obama out. Now, this morning, Larry Wilmore is getting some mixed reviews. He landed some good shots, he landed some cheap shots, but, you know, he came on second. And President Obama, as a stand-up comedian, is a very hard act to follow. Paula? It certainly is, and i got to tell you, sitting in that room, he really has some impressive comedic timing, Nick. I, I think he might have a future in this whole comedy act. Well, he's got to figure out what to do next. He certainly, <laughs> he definitely, I mean, you could see it even on the video, you were in the room, but you can see he does have great timing. Uh, yeah, excellent, the whole dropping the mic moment. We, I actually was there with the, the ladies of The View. We mm -hmm. had a wonderful evening. There you are. There we all Looking posted. great Whoop. in your blue dress, Yes, if you wonder where Whoopi did show up, she was just uh, not photographed here, but we all sat at the table together. Um, I have to admit, I, you know, it's the nerd problem. 
I got a little starstruck. That's um, Candy Carter, who's our EP at the VA with Madeleine Albright, former Secretary of State, Tony Goldwyn, Fitz from Scandal, and Don Lemon, uh, one of my former colleagues. Cecilia Vega was there. I mean, it nice. was star, star studded, and we all geeked out quite a bit, I have to say. <laughs> Candace Cameron Bure and her husband. Val as well. Great so pictures. You know who else was at the dinner last night? Who? ABC's Martha Raddatz, who joins oh. us now from Washington, where she's going to be hosting this week later this morning. Hey, Martha. So, hey. Uh, what was it? What was the view from your perch, <laughs> just a few feet from the president? How was that? Well, what you really look for, me anyway, is the reaction of those who are the butt of some of those jokes. From my vantage point, it looked like a couple of members of the Trump family, his sons, laughed at the jokes. My Bernie wife. Sanders, Hillary Clinton's staff laughed. Well. Of well, course, well. Uh, Obama didn't aim quite as many jokes at Hillary Clinton. And even some of the Republican establishment were taking it all in stride. It just shows you, Dan and Paula, that on at least one night a year, everyone comes together. It was a fun night. Now back to work. Yeah, back to work. You got to hand it to the Trump boys too. They know what they knew what they were going to face when they walked into that room. But we want to talk about Indiana, the crucial Hoosier state. Uh, it's the big contest on Tuesday. Who's likely to win, Martha? And what does it mean for the shape of this race? We just heard Devin talk about this, but what we does it mean? We did hear Devin. You know, it, it, it is really such a tight race and so crucial. Trump has been leading in most polls heading into Tuesday, but Ted Cruz has steadily narrowed that gap. It's hard to overstate how important this race is for Cruz. If Trump wins, he is on a glide path to the magic delegate number of 1237. But if Cruz wins in the Hoosier state, he will have the momentum and make a contested convention more likely, Dan and Paula. Mm. Tuesday night, a big night. And Martha, I just want to remind our viewers, it's a big morning for you. You've got a great show this morning. You're going to go one-on-one -on -one with Ted Cruz. That's coming up on this week, later this morning, right here on ABC. Martha, thanks again. Yeah, thanks, Martha. We want to turn now to the battle that is brewing over Prince's estate and the bombshell revelation from his sister who says he did not have a will. That is severely complicating matters, and we're going to see its bitter effects this week because the family is headed to court for the first time over his massive fortune. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has a story from Prince's Paisley Park compound. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Paula. It's peaceful here this morning, but in less than 24 hours, a potential fight is heating up over Prince's estate with an estimated $300 million on the line. This is shaping up to get complicated. This morning, new clues about the future of Prince's estimated $300 million estate as the superstar's family heads to court tomorrow. New questions about possible sons or daughters of the music icon who died without a wife or any publicly known children. To prove whether you're a love child, could be an uphill battle. These two own Air Hunters International, a company that searches for possible heirs to a state. Their office overwhelmed with people claiming to be Prince's love child. So far, one man's story has piqued their interest. He was born in the 80s, and his mother crossed paths with Prince a couple times. The Air Hunters are still verifying key details. Prince's sister, Tyka, seen here greeting fans. Thank you for loving him, y'all filed court documents acknowledging that the superstar has heirs whose identities and addresses need to be determined. In addition to Prince's six siblings, Air Hunters International says they found a seventh potential heir, a teenage grandniece, the granddaughter of another one of Prince's half-brothers who died years ago. She will inherit the share that her uh, grandparent would have been entitled to. ABC News has spoken to the teen's grandmother who had no comment at this time about the news. Don't Whoever inherits his estate stands to make a significant profit going forward. His music back on top of the charts. He is predicted to join the ranks of Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson, both who have made billions posthumously. The search isn't over yet. This could just be the beginning. And several of Prince's siblings are expected in court on Monday as they try to move forward settling his estate. If Prince had any children, those children would inherit his entire estate. Dan and Paula. I mean, while we're waiting for that toxicology report, Eva Pilgrim reporting from Chanhassen, Minnesota this morning. Thank you. A lot of other news this morning. Let's get it over to Ron. Hey. Hey, good morning to you, uh, Dan and Paula. Rachel, good morning, everyone. We begin with a state of emergency declared in Baghdad after thousands of anti-government demonstrators break through the heavily fortified green zone home to parliament and many foreign embassies including the american embassy the protesters scaling the walls and knocking over barricades as they storm the parliament building they're demanding that the prime minister end corruption and eliminate the political system put in place 
in that country since the U.S.-led invasion in 2003. This morning, the demonstrators have left the Parliament building but have set up camp on the grounds outside. And new details this morning about that deadly carnival accident in Texas that killed one teenager and injured another when they were tossed from a spinning ride. The New York Daily News reports that another girl on that same ride complained that her seatbelt did not buckle. That teen is said to have clung to the unfastened belt to keep from being thrown from that ride. She was unharmed. And 13 days after that devastating earthquake in Ecuador, a survivor trapped in rubble has been pulled out alive. A uh, rescue crews found the man who had been trapped since April 16th. He's being treated at a local hospital. A 7.8 magnitude quake killed more than 650 people in that country. And an investigation underway in Boston after a deadly crash involving a duck boat, that tour boat, the uh, tour vehicle striking and killing a 29-year-old woman riding a scooter. Her passenger also hit but not seriously injured. 30 people were on the duck boat at the time. The cause of that crash is unknown and under investigation. And Steph Curry may be uh, temporarily sidelined with an injury, but the uh, Golden State Warriors star is hitting the newsstands. Curry and his family featured on the cover of the June issue of Parents magazine. In a video, he reveals that his three-year-old daughter Riley is actually the bigger star in the family. People recognize her way faster than they do me or Aisha. Um, and if we go somewhere and she's not with us, that's the first question they ask is, where's Riley? <laughs> that's funny. You may remember uh, Riley, of course, from this press conference last spring when she absolutely charmed the crowd. And the uh, Charlotte Hornets, the Miami Heat, square off in a decisive Game 7 of the NBA playoffs today on ABC at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. That is 3 a.m. Monday in Guam, if you're in Guam <laughs> watching this on uh, KTGM. <laughs> there, yeah, we have an affiliate in Guam, by the way. And game one of the Western semis uh, between the Golden State Warriors and Portland Trail Blazers is at 3.30 a.m. That is 5.30 a.m. Monday in Guam. Thank you. Thank you okay. for the time conversion. We really um, appreciate that, Ron. Um, but Steph Curry could be back this series, possibly, maybe not game two, but maybe game Maybe late if it, goes, if it goes late into the uh, series. Um, you've still got to favor the Warriors. Over I just there. favor Riley Cur Curry. Yes. You guys? Yeah. I'll take her She's every precious. time. Yeah. You know what I love? Whenever we can bring a little bit of Chicago here to New York. So let's send things over to Cheryl Scott from our powerhouse Chicago station, WLS. Once again, in for Rob. Great to have you, Cheryl. Uh, so happy to be here. But we are talking about the severe flooding occurring in parts of Texas, Louisiana. It is not done yet. We're going to take you to the map where we have heavy rain and some thunderstorm activity right now close to New Orleans. That's where the flash flood threat exists through the morning and the afternoon today. So take note, this area of low pressure slowly sliding up to the north and east, which means the mid-Atlantic, the northeast, parts of New York. It's going to be a wet Sunday for us. On top of that, about 10 to 15 degrees cooler than yesterday. But the big concern, the flooding, flood warnings, flash flood watch still in effect for much of southern Louisiana. This is where we could find anywhere from four to seven plus inches of rain still. Parts of Carolina, some decent rain for you. Now the northeast, unfortunately, it's the weekend, anywhere from one to two inches, but that rain is needed. On the flip side, the other side of the country, we're warming up from parts of Seattle and Portland, upper 70s to low 80s, above average, seasonable here for California and Nevada. That's a look across the nation. Here's what's happening locally. Good morning, Washington. Umbrellas needed through much of the morning with rain across the region. A little break, I think, through the midday hours. And then isolated thunderstorms will be possible late today and into the evening hours. Temperatures should reach the mid to upper 60s across the region. Tonight, after our evening thunder showers, we'll see cloudy skies and patchy fog. Our lows around 59. And tomorrow, our best chance of seeing a drier day after some clouds in the morning. Look for partly sunny skies in the afternoon. Highs near 80 degrees unsettled the rest of the week. And another chilly one in Chicago today, I have to mention. But we, like you said yesterday, the Cubs are keeping it nice and warm. Yes, right? they're bringing Chicago the heat Cubs. still. White Sox okay. are doing well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget. And the weather in Guam <laughs> is great. <laughs> <laughs> a little steamy. I yeah, a little steamy. Touché. I've actually been there. Nice have place. Yeah. Yes, huh. I have uh, for ABC News. But I'll tell you about that another time. We do have another story from a far-flung locale this morning. A resourceful mother and daughter at the center of an amazing rescue story. It really was nothing short of remarkable. They used sticks and stones to spell out 
help, as you can see right there, Rachel's here with Martin. You know, this was just supposed to be a day-long hike, but it turned into a four-day nightmare for mom and I daughter. know, so scary, but luckily a very happy ending. So it happens to college students all the time. You're studying abroad, and your parents come for a visit, so you want to show them the cool sights, right? But when Rachel Lloyd's mother, Carolyn, came to visit her in New Zealand, what was meant to be a fun-filled day taking in the sights turned into a frightening fight for survival. The words, seen from the air, written in rocks and stone, simply spelled out, help. I, I, you know, was scared to death. I thought they wouldn't find us. Americans, Carolyn Lloyd and her daughter, Rachel, lost for four days. 